<clears throat> okay, great. Um, yeah, so what we were just talking about with the this is getting focused. Okay, yeah. Yeah, like the so the guy, the guy on the left here made some incredible move that he can't he can't believe with his own eyes. So he needs his spectacles to to confirm the yeah. and to confirm his his unfor his misfortune. Um, okay, so let's see where let's see where we are. This is this is where I am. Um, I wish I had another. I wish I had my my other drawing is downstairs. Well, um, so Adele, I, last night I um, after dinner I wound up rewatching the video of this class and then you know doing it right along you know doing it along you know with the I mean the full ninety minutes. Wow. Um, and it was it was fun. It was interesting. It, it, it was uh, it was better than I thought um, actually. <laughs> So I, I, I was, it was, it was fun. I had to take a couple breaks actually. It's a long time to, to, um, to do it. When you're, when, when on this end of it, it's, it goes by so quickly, but when you're on the yeah. other end, it's, it's, it is a lot of work. So I, but it I goes by quickly on our end too. Yeah. Good. I'm, I'm glad. Um, so now I have to figure out, I was thinking about maybe folding. It's just like, I have to fold this in order or, or do i oh that's interesting maybe i just need to cut off a little less i have to find out maybe so yesterday uh adele, um yeah adele remember you were saying how you would kind of ghost in you know the the ghost in everything um and then come back into it and i think i might do something similar um at least with the bench, I think I might ghost in the bench just so I know where I can then cut the paper. You know, I have a lot, of, I have like excess on here and with the format of the Zoom. Um, so let's, let's, just, let's just hop into it. I think I actually even made reference to where, we're, where I would begin. And I think I'm gonna, you know, go back to the stool and then relate, you know, the knee because the knee is the closest part to the stool. And then if we can build that leg then that'll bring us, you know, bring in the knee into the calf, and then that'll bring us to the edge of the bench. Um, so we'll get the with this gutter, this like the space between the stool and the bench. And then if we can get the bench, honestly, the figures are sort of arbitrary. You know, then um, I'll, I'll I'll try to scale out the bench, and then I'll be able to cut off some of this piece so I can fit, you know, maybe even maybe even both compositions, not entire compositions, but I'll be able to certainly be able to fit this guy on there. Um, okay, so let's, let's try it. I've got my bench. <clears throat> and then I've got the, you know, the I'm going to find the closest moment from the stools edge to the to the knee. And the knee is kind of made up of these straight lines It really, it really turns the corner. I mean, you have this, the top of the thigh and then it turns the corner and then leads into uh, the calf. And we've got the, the drawstring of the um, britches. <laughs> we'll call them britches. <clears throat> yeah, it's really kind of short legs, wild. And um, there's a lot of really enjoyable overlaps um, in this sequence here, which I was, the whole piece is filled with, you know, pleasant layering. And this figure really delivers on that. So you have the, you know, the top of the thigh and then the forearm into the elbow. Um, there's this really nice, um, thin broad triangle in the this elbow we talked about the triangle in the, uh you know in the elbow of uh the priest here and do you see this triangle underneath there that triangular plane um it looks like there's all kinds of wonderful planes um happening in the arm of uh look at that light triangle it's almost equilateral 
Nice. I just can't get over how, maybe it's because everything is so puffy that the arms feel short. Uh, the limbs feel short. Um, or they could just be like short people. <clears throat> All right, so I haven't been naming my things, and this is the first drawings that I've made today. So I wouldn't say that I'm warmed up, but we have the, um, the blocky wrist. So that seems to be a theme. Uh, a trapezoidal forearm of the fabric, a triangular transition from the forearm into uh, the puffy sleeve. And um, it looks as though, if you look up here, this little, the, the cavern, that being the top of a, um, I guess it would be a hexagon. So if this is the top, you'd have one angled plane, two angled planes to get the point, And then you'd have two parallel sides. So one, two, three, four. And then in theory, underneath that arm, um, it would angle in as well. So this whole sleeve, the vest, you know, however you want to think about it, the sleeve coming out of the vest or the vest, that transition um, is hexagonal. So here's this little triangular peak. And then the length um, of the back of the arm, and then it cuts underneath. And, I, and that uh, hex, hexagon helps then spring this prism of fabric out of the arm. So when I say the prism of fabric, I mean, this is the, the broad side and then it angles down and then it would cut under. So this whole side here is gonna be in shadow regardless of the folds on the front of the arm. Um, there is um, just like you would have um, almost like the thickness to the, to the the thickness to the chair, you there's a um, it's almost like a like a border. You know this the, the vest is so you know it's it's so thick that it actually has a you know a, a dimension to it, like it's a three D form, and then that's going to lead into the the shoulders. go across the back of the neck. All right, so I did not listen to myself from five minutes ago um, where I said I was gonna do the bench. <laughs> uh, I just got seduced, I got completely <laughs> seduced by um, the figure. And um, I'm gonna try it. I mean, it, I, I could go all, I mean, it, it's not like it's a bad move to do what I just did. Um, it just didn't, it didn't, I didn't stick to the plan. So I'm going to come back in and just see if I can, um, I think when we, yesterday, when we related the stool on the floor to the legs of the table on the floor, and then the, um, the chair to the table on the floor, um, that really is probably the most unifying aspect. Um, you know, when the chairs and the table and the stool are all oriented different, differently, you know, in terms of perspective, they still share the same plane that is the ground. Um, so let's, let's get into, let's find that. Um, and, you know, we have the, the, it, it will, we will be well served. So we've got the corner of the stool. And then, you know, if you can almost like imagine like a grid on the floor, like tape, if you had, if you were to lay, um, you know, just like stage tape, um, you know, how could you, if you had to go back to um, replace it, um, you know, if you were doing the same stage performance every single night, you'd have the, the you know, the, the stage crew come and they would lay the bench. Um, that's kind of like, I'm, I'm just imagining having tape be, you know, on the, laid on the ground. And then where would that tape be laid um, relative to the, to the base of the, the bench. Um, the bench is so funny because um, the, the, there, there's just no, there's almost no symmetry. You look at the little, the opening, the triangular opening, 
from one leg of the bench to the other leg of the bench, and it is so ruffian. Yeah, the side is so light. Um, I wonder if that's what... If there's that, some ghost that, lines in there, aren't there? Yeah, there are. I don't know what hmm. they... They're completely off. Yeah, unless he was sitting on a stool. You know, I'm seeing these, like, these parallel lines here. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to see if it, if it relates to something. I mean, it, that is like a, the, that line relates to the, to the shadow on the floor, but. <clears throat> there are, there are so many. I mean, look at, look at this bench. There's like the, the ghost lines on the, on that, the bench had moved down. Yeah. <laughs> um, there is that vertical. So remember, we found the that center line that ran through the shadow side of the arm. Um, you know, kind of dividing the the thigh from the pelvis, and then the edge of the and then the edge of the stool. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so beginning back, um, going back to the where we began thinking about the relationship between the stool and the leg. And I'm putting the foot in here, and I can see already that it looks like I might need to move my move my chair over. Look at how short the distance is between the knee and the crease at the back of the knee. And then from the length of the thigh um, to the corner of the, the bench seat. Hmm. Not so bad. Yeah, so um, if, you, if you look at the bench seat, if you, if you look at the, um, imagine that there's no three dimensions there it's like he had to carve up like that. The small circle is the, the, the small triangle is the middle. So watch, watch what I do here. So I have this trapezoid, which is the whole baseline of the bench. And then I put a triangle in the middle. Mm. That's equal. And then he adds the dimension. He cuts out the inside. And he makes the, therefore making the right side too small. So there was a, um, I wouldn't call it a foul up, but I don't think it was a direct observation. <clears throat> we got the front edge. Um, it's a nice thing too. The, the front edge of the bench is going to echo the front edge of the table and the front edge of the backgammon board makes a nice it, it, it is at a slightly it's at a slightly different angle ever so slightly um so let's use um some ghosts and x-ray vision let's see if we can pull the bench back into space in a in a funhouse kind of way i mean those lines really converge fast I just I can't imagine that they would that anybody would construct a, a bench quite like this. We have the three-dimensional block of that leg. And then first the trapezoid. And then you cut out the middle. Feels really and awkward. It feels really awkward. Um, my drawing, I think, is true. 
um it's just it just it it just all got he's really trying to make it feel like it's going back in space you know it's it's a, it's kind of overkill um my drawing i think is relating enough to um the reference that i think i can i can go ahead and it's weird i i feel i like the bench a lot better having drawn it um and i think where he i don't think it's where he went wrong but it's the it's these lines converging you could see it in his you could actually hear it practically his thinking like he starts at the front end and then he's like okay yeah these lines are going to converge they're going to go back and eventually meet at one point and he just he you know he he just pulls those lines intentionally together like a string and it just went back you know i think a lot faster than he thought i think that the knowledge um you know it's it's the knowledge, I guess I, I just think the, the term I'm thinking is just like overkill. Um, you know, it's like you, you, just because you can make something feel like it's going back into space um, doesn't mean that it, you, know, you have to use it. It's like he needed to use that idea at a level of a two, you know, a two or a three, and he, and he employed it at a level of seven, you know? You know, I think looking at the marks on the end of the bench, it looks to me like he had the bench shorter first, and then he, after he got the figures in, he felt he needed more length behind the guy that's got his foot mm -hmm. on it. This thing, because right you, yeah. you see the back end yeah, of the bench. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it look like he kind of, yeah. you, know, it, it, you know, decided to extend the bench further? Yeah. Even the edge looked darker Yeah. that. And he and he made he extended the 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 bench and he reduced the size of the leg. He, there's ghosts on the side of the leg too. So oh, he pulled yeah. he he moved he moved the leg in and made the bench go out. You know, in the original in the in the pencil sketch. <clears throat> um, so that that tells me that we should put the figures in and then decide where the bench should end. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I don't. Uh, yeah, we'll, we 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 shall see. We'll we'll see. Um, I think we've got that. We've got at least a stand-in for the bench, and my mine mine feels even larger. Yeah, I, but but mine is larger on both ends, so it's just a little it's just a little thicker. Um, okay, so let's get back into the figure. I I, I, I like the. Uh, it's a it's a good idea. <clears throat> Okay, so here is where clothes really, the geometry can be a, a couple of different things. Um, you know, if you, if you care to see um, the leg in uh, planes, you could see it, um, you know, like hexagonally. So there's the light part, which is, you know, flat along the side, and there's a shadow part that's along the top, and then it gets darker again, you know, underneath. You know that's one way of seeing like that thigh. Um, you could also, I mean, it's also helpful to see it as like a, a, a cylinder. You know, you could push the cylindrical aspect of it. Um, <clears throat> you know, you can think. I, I mean, the the pelvis is a block, so you're seeing the side of the pelvis, and then it runs, it angles back. Oh God, remind me later. Um, and then it runs back along the side. And actually, you can follow the belt loop if you want. The belt loop is actually closer, I think, to um, the anatomy um, in terms of like the, the top of the pelvis. So we have the side plane and then we have where the, um, you know, the, the clothes that link up the glutes and then we're going to come up the side, it pinches in and then we'll go into the thoracic vertebra. So if you can imagine that there's this triangle right here this would be the sacral triangle um and then you have the hips running this way gluteus medius gluteus maximus and then that turns into the the thigh so you can look below but the 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 form that i'm thinking of is um it's it's almost like a uh it's more like a hush puppy you know those uh those um the breaded cocktail wieners 
yeah. I, please forgive me but if you if you look at like the the fullness and the roundness of the pelvis oh, yeah. there is the short side and then there's the long side on the back and it's it, it's it can't you know the way that they cook they have planes you know but they're still they're still puffy um and that's you know so i really want you to be able to see that there's this side and then it runs uh in the back um the spine um runs up this way and it's going to be it's going to be a, 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 an ex, a hardcore arc um and the way that the, his back is receiving all of the light um it's almost like the, the you take the angle of the spine and you just translate you just slide it over so that it can be um the silhouette um of the jacket so if you can imagine the curve of the spine and how it enters into the back of the neck, um, you'll be you'll be in good shape. But whenever there's a you know this this large light plane where there's not a whole lot of definition, you know how are you gonna how can you rationally use um, you know find that silhouette without you know thinking that you're directly observing it? Well, you could, if you think about what the spine is actually doing it should give you the right answer. So if I erase the spine, um, I've got my silhouette and it, and it works. I'm having troubles making him hunch over and I don't know yes, why. Me too. Me too. Okay. Um, so let's, so one of the angles that you're going to need is the middle of the shoulders, which is the trapezius. And that's the top of our uh, hexagon. So that one will come up and that's where the neck is going to start. So the hunching over, um, let me draw it up here. So most people, they have a rib cage and you know, the, you have the seven cervical vertebra at the back and you have the clavicle at the front and the head angles like this. And, you know, you have the, you know, the face really does come forward, you know, significantly, you know, the, the, the angle of the neck goes this way. So if we were to, you know, think about the hunching, you know, this is the, a nice S curve of the spine and you have the hips that run here, sacral triangle, you know, belly, you know, breasts, whatever, or pectorals, um, this spine here. Now watch when we like take this hip Actually, <laughs> we'll start from the hips and then the, the spine is going to arc this way. So the arc goes this way and then imagine up here, this is where the arc goes you know, this is running like this. So the, the, the shoulder, the seven cervical vertebra and the clavicle <clears throat> are almost vertical. So then the neck is going to come out like this. And then the head do you see, do you see that? So it's yeah. the difference between this angle and this angle, and then what the neck already does. So the neck is gonna come basically almost horizontal. <clears throat> so it's the combination of the curve of the spine and then the trajectory of the neck. And then the, the head has to accommodate. So, you know, the head is still looking up no matter what. I mean, the eye is here, the eye is here, but like the face is vertical face is vertical and maybe even tilted back a little bit because it's, it has to account for, you know, all of that distortion. So let's look back at our guy. <clears throat> oh, good. So I'm going to cut, I'm going to cut this, I'm gonna cut this off in a second. Okay. So then when the arc goes up, we get the angle of the um, collar. And then you do see a little bit of the neck. I guess he's not hunched over too far. So that neck comes out, the neck comes out, and then the chin goes across. Yeah. 
think his arm also okay. helps him look hunched over the angle of his arm. I'm trying to find that again. Because there's this, there's this, there's this, um, the, you have the arm and you have the thickness of the vest and you have the front of the vest that you're really being able to see. And then there's a, um, <clears throat> you know, this kind of this stiff collar. Um, now it's interesting, the brim of the hat, you know, the hat makes a ellipse on the back and then it's going to make a, um, sort of a gumdrop shape for the top. The nice thing is that he gives us the top plane of the hat. This guy's whole theme is hex hexagons. I love it. Do you see the uh, six sided points to the hat? Um, so it's an ellipse around the brim. And then you have this, um, it's a string or a rope or some decorative element that is at the base of the, um, you know, I, I keep calling it a gumdrop, but it, it just reminds me of a gumdrop. It's a, it's, it's some kind of uh, prism, but it's, the top of it is definitely has six sides. And we can, you know, the light's coming from the left so we can, you know, shade the other side. And then the brim is a lot like the chair. You know, I can actually pull up the, <laughs> pull up the, uh, my, the, 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 the thickness of the chair, the curving part of the chair where there's a top plane and then there's a side plane. And that's what the brim of the hat does right here. Um, except, you know, I'll do it, except it starts, this is the thick portion, the thickness of it, it wraps around. Um, and then what happens is, is that um, because it's, it, 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 this is the front plane here, and then there's a point where it flips over itself and goes back down. So this is the top plane, the front of the hat, and then it flips over itself, and then this becomes the, the flat side of the hat. See how the brim is flipped up here and then it's flopped down there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, it's, the, it's the thickness that is going to unify it. So the brim is uh, rounded here, and then it flips up the ramp and goes around. <laughs> um, that went better than expected. Um, it's got to come. So, okay. So now I'm thinking I got, all, so do you see my ghost here? I added way too much face. So I've got the collar and then you have the, the, the thinnest, like the, um, you know, there's, there's like almost like tension and stress in the neck. Um, and then you go from the neck into the double chin. So this is the, the, the first angle coming out is the, um, the, basically it's a jawline, but really it's the jugular. It's from, it's the, the, the skin that connects the chin to the neck. And that is, you know, and, and, you know, and people that have, you know, store fat, that is a place where fat is stored. So, it, so it's, um, but in skinny people, you know, it's just, it's just a connector. It's just the soft spot. You can actually feel your tongue underneath there, uh, the tongue, and then that your tongue actually goes down into the esophagus. So it's the, the, uh, this underside is the esophagus. And then this is the soft underbelly of the jaw. And then he's got this really kind of pointy chin. And then of course we just go back, climb back up again. We have to, you know, rever you know almost reverse engineer our figures. So you go from the chin into the upper lip and then the upper lip, uh, the lower lip, excuse me, into the upper lip. And then you go into the philtrum and he's got a very um, almost witch-like nose where it's got a flat bottom and then a curving shark fin shape to the top. And I think he provides us even with a little bit of a nostril. Um, linking up all of those moments and actually coming in front of all of those moments is the chubby part of the cheek. So it's a, it's, a, it's a lost profile. In fact, the cheek is technically in front of both of the lips and the nose. 
the hat doesn't really throw a shadow but the whole face is in shadow because it's a plane that's facing away from the light source and there's some hair some straggly hair that's emerging from underneath the hat so those are our those are some of the structures now the hands um i'm going to build we've got the you know the 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 hand comes out um, from underneath the cuff. And this is kind of like this thumb region and it's gonna level out into the top of the block. And then we're gonna see the side of the block, which is basically the back of the hand. There's some delicate suggestions of the fingers, but really it's just the, um, the profile of the knuckles, um, similarly to the, his opponent actually, where the the silhouette of the hand is, in fact, the knuckle ridges. Um, this whole, the top of the, uh, top of the block is going to be divided into thumb and the forefinger. So we really quickly went from the geometry of the block of the hand into the anatomy of the hand. We're going to argue the same thing on this side. We're going to draw the top of the thumb and forefinger plane, and it's gonna angle back down. And then we're gonna see some of those fingers, it looks like. Um, I was telling Adele before we started recording, um, you know, I gave him a really big benefit of the doubt um, for, you know, I, I was very forgiving in terms of criticizing um, his hands. And they just, they are, they might be better than Rembrandt's, but, <laughs> <laughs> They're no Franz Halls. It's kind of a fun, uh, you know, hands, hands are the kind of thing that you can, um, oh, there's the thing. So in the same way that we profiled the knuckles on this side, you actually, he, he's layering the fingertips on this side. So there's the index finger, then there's the middle, then there's the ring, and then there's the pinky. And they're all, you know, the, it's, it's a loose grip, uh, a loose grip. Nice. Wow. <laughs> it's, I'm amazed that you see all that in that sort of mishmash. <laughs> it is a mishmash. And he does know what he's doing. Because um, you, can't, you can't make those lines without, again, you know, having a deeper understanding of, you know, hands generally. So um, it's interesting because Right before I did the hands and the face, I was like, okay, let's put in some tone and then we'll get into, you know, the, the fine, the finer, the finer marks, like make these look like folds, add the anatomy. We've really been just drawing the geometry um, up until this point, you know, the planes, the masses, um, and, you know, just using the anatomy to, um, you know, using the geometry and naming the part, but that was really it. We haven't really modified the marks to appear to be, um, you know, fabric or wood, or, you know, even attempt to um, make the line weight appropriate, um, according to how um, Ostad, it's O-S-T-A, O-S-T-A-D-E, right? O-S-T-A-D-E. How would you think you'd pronounce that? Adrian Ostad. Van Ostad. 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 Not Ostad? Well, no. in Dutch, it would be Ostad. Ostad. Okay. Um, uh, I think one of, the, one, of the, one of the things that I thought was really helpful yesterday, um, which I enjoyed when I rewatched the video, um, was to, you know, before we even like kind of detail the, the line work um, with the tortillion reflect on what the light is doing. I mean, I'm, I'm envisioning this like natural light, um, you know, a big window, you know, shining light onto the scene. And we get, so every plane that doesn't face the light, that's either an under plane or a plane that's on the right side of the objects needs some tone. And we have these construction lines and we can soften the construction lines and employ them in the 
the shading and then we'll come back in. I love that. Um, I, so I, did, I probably did do that a little. I made his arm a little bit too thick back here. So that'll be nice to trim and then shade the inside of his belly, shade the side of his gluteus medius, the underside of his gluteus maximus into the thigh, and then the top of his leg, the sh shading turns the corner on the front of his knee, goes super dark behind, because the bench, not only is, the, uh, is it kind of an, an underplane, but the bench is throwing a shadow so there's not much light this is a this is a deep crease in here there's not a whole lot of light getting into the space between the leg and the the uh the the, the man's leg and the, the bench i am a little bit surprised that there's not a cast shadow on the bench but that's all right there is with his foot the second figure Great little dimple in the top of the hat. And then, you know, like the, the light on the back of his uh, jacket, the vest, his whole back, the, um, the, the hat, the back of his head is, uh, is expansive and light as well. There's a uh, really a nice um, series of uh, spiraled rope or ribbon that goes around the base of the hat. I'm playing that up a little bit. And I can clean up the separation between his collar. There's a real line um, between the collar and the vest. I can be clear about that. And there's not much as far as the, you know, the, the way that the vest goes up the mountain and then over the crest and then down the front. Um, there's not much transition in there in terms of value, but there is in the, in the uh, collar. I think that's why the collar is so important. We yesterday I referred to the, this miniature cavern, this little, um, sh you know, this dark note that happens um, with the set with the loose separation between the the jacket and the sleeve, and the play of um, the layers in this uh, front of the sleeve. So the sleeve, the fold passes behind this fold that's in front, and then that fold passes behind this next fold that's in front, and then that turns into the crease at the elbow and then the elbow fold is in front of the cuff and it's a just a, a, a very simple but effective way of showing dimension in a very tight space you know landscape artists do it with shrubs and trees and bushes Let's see if we can find it along the back so then the, the vest and the sleeve are separated. And there's this fold of the sleeve that comes in front. And then it's pretty steady. You get the elbow, there's another fold underneath there. Really turns the corner. And then there's another fold right at the base of the elbow. Yeah, I mean, it, that the, the joke that I made yesterday where I was like, it's, you know, the 20th century is over, you can make you can you can you know you can have details again. Um, that's that's where you can really the refinement of a silhouette line. There's just nothing. There's really it's you can get the thick to the thin. You get it in the right positioning. There's just nothing. You know, it's like one of the most beautiful aspects of, of drawing. And again, it's the one that everybody's drawn to. No pun intended. Everyone's um, feels a. Um, they, you know, it's the most natural um, tool in the artists. Um, and I think it, it's practically um, 
I mean, it's almost sabotage, um, encouraging people not to um, employ and celebrate a really refined silhouette line. <clears throat> oh, that's neat. Okay, so the, uh, the belt loop has a thickness to it. And it does pinch in, so it's it's not very tight, but it's tight enough that it, you know, meets at a point or as it turns the corner, and then the um, the shirt is allowed to, um, you know, be it's it, the shirt is tight above the the belt loop, and it's kind of more free flowing below, and that you know again hides the anatomy, like the like the 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 apron hid the awkward transition from the torso into the legs. Um, this, this also hides some of the, uh, the, 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 the love handles leading into the waist. Look at the hair. Um, this, the, the silhouette lines on the legs. Um, th I was looking at, what was I drawing? What was I drawing? Oh, yeah, here, here it is. It's the, um, it's the, le the, the lines that are in, um, you know, the legs that are in shadow. Those, uh, because it's so in shadow, you have a, you, you're, you have more, range in terms of the thickness of the line because because it's so dark you can use a thicker line and they feel uh, homogenous are they and just lose this excess a little bit more see more of mine and his at the same time Ooh. Stacy, hold on. You, you got to say hi to the class. I don't know why my phone's not working. Hold on, Stace. I know it's the bonus class. I told you all about it. You had said you had to go to the airport. Um, I can't turn my phone off and I can't hear you. So call, do you want to get on Zoom? You can get on Zoom if you can, if you're at home. Oh, okay. All right. I'll call me. I'll, I'll call me later when you drop them off. We'll be done by then. Bye. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All righty. Um, okay. So yeah, that's what I was saying is down here in these legs, the uh you know you can go pretty heavy with the with the marks because they're so we're so heavy with the the shadow um there's this the the belt the belt loop and then the the drawstring on the um calves and i don't know i don't know if you could see how i drew that but um i went on the side plane of the leg and then it turned and went underneath the thigh. So it came here and it turned underneath. It seems super subtle and it is, but that's, that's how it's good. Um, this under thigh is really nice. If you follow this line, speaking of contours, so this will be nice and dark and the, it, the line separates the thigh from the calf. And you don't really know whether that belongs to the shadow or that belongs to the thigh. But then once it hits the bench, it starts to thin out a little bit. And then it runs the length of the gluteus maximus. And then it turns the corner around that glute. And then this is the fabric bridge between the cheeks. And then it picks up the darkness ever so slightly again before it comes up on the other side. I mean, it's so good. I mean, it's just so good how we 
that he traverses that line, you know, across that um, that particularly amusing part of the anatomy. There's the these these folds that um, I think are important because they combine we, we we the shading we thought about it in terms of those planes but then the fabric gives us the curve so you can think about like a piece of um i don't have the i don't have anything else here but except for this tissue so i rolled this tissue like this so there's no and, that, and there's actually literally folds in here but then it, that's smooth. And then if you take it and you start to turn it, that that tension, see how it becomes that spiral? Yeah. And like, you know, it becomes more spirally, more spirally, the tighter you make it. His is a loose one. So you have this, this tightness underneath the seat of his pants and it's spinning around to the front. You know, the, where it's like, it's tense on his knee because the when he bends his knee, the knee actually pulls it this way and then he's seated. So then it's pulled this way. So it's creating that spiral, um, you know, because of, because of the, you know, his pose. It's great. Uh, with all of that definition in the leg and all of these wonderful little folds, he um, then very it's very kind of ab abbreviated um with the calf i guess there's a little bit of tension in those socks perhaps and you know these shoes these leather these leather bumpy leather shoes you know i would we i, I think we should probably look to this one or maybe the renaissance festival i don't know there's not a whole lot of information except that there's there's a lot of wrinkles in that in that shoe. I kind of like I kind of like mine a little better. I was I was thinking of the you know, I actually I, I thought that I might have a bunion. Um, I think I'm gonna get a bunion, um, but it's the outside. It's just like this extra growth on the outside of my um, my pinky joint. And you know that's where and this is his right foot. So this is where my bunion's happening. And then the toes come in and come to a point on that side. So even though I'm drawing the fabric, I'm envisioning the foot um, underneath it. Totally rad. <clears throat> totally rad. And I don't know if I can draw anything else I, I don't think i have there's um maybe the there's these little caverns perhaps underneath the folds you know there's a ghost in here which is you know just a this, this is a, a, an actual mistake um you know where the the line of the shirt overlaps the line of the glutes on the far side but this little little thickness goes up in there and there's these little hairpin turns that occur in those creases that are nice. There's a couple ghosts or very thin folds um, at the at the base of his shirt, and you can actually see those ghosts. They create a sacral triangle. I mean, <clears throat> a lot of times um, artists will put two dots back here because at the at, there's there's often dimples at the um, you know at the at the contact point of the you know the hip bones with the sacral with the actual fused vertebra and it helps you build like a miniature triangle in the back and you help you stay oriented mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um a lot of times i'll just oh my god that's hilarious can i can i say another funny thing um yeah. which could this could be a joke so in the way that this leg and i don't think this is true but in the way that this the this the this knee combo could belong to the guy that's leaning on the thing, imagine if this hand here, the left hand, is actually attached to the man behind him. Oh <laughs> you know, God! He's, he's got like an extra long arm, which again, I I don't think that's the case, but it's still kind of funny. 
I can move yeah. that. Hand, I can move this. I can maybe. Oh, maybe I can move that up or something. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, and I, yeah, you wonder what. Yeah, maybe his his hand is leaning on it, leaning on the but table. I like it you the gotta way wonder it, what this arm is doing. What's I that? I like the hand the way it is because it makes the the guy in in front sort of leaning more forward, like daring him to challenge his move. You know, he's yeah. sort of, you know, like this on the table. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, he, yeah, he's like, he's there with anticipation of the victory. Like, <laughs> it's almost like, <laughs> it, it might be the moment that the game is over and they're both coming. I mean, there's got to be a point where everyone realizes the game is over. You know, like there's a winner and a loser and everyone's playing. And then there's a, an instant when everyone knows that it's over. Um, I, that's, that's, a, that's, a wonderful, that's a wonderful thing to consider. I've never considered that instant. And it might even happen at different times. I mean, with great chess players, they know. I mean, the, the, some people know when the game's over. Um, well before the game is, is over. Yeah. Um, all right. So I've got my little heel. So um, we can just go up the side of um, our figure and we're going to try to you know, relate. I mean, you got the, the arm, which would in theory attach from, you know, exit here. We got this leg that is going to exit here and here, perhaps. Um, you know, these are all those little, the leg and the arm relative to the back is going to be subject to change only because I, you know, my figure, the guy who's, you know, the one we just drew this morning, he's bigger. I mean, my, my guy is bigger than what's being offered in the drawing. So, you know, the, the proportions aren't exact. So hopefully everything lines up, but our, our anchor is going to be the, um, the heel. You want to think about the footprint, you know, imagine what the footprint is doing on this bench and you can draw that the inside edge of that foot leading into the front of the moccasin with the broad almost the pad of the ball of the foot and the toes and then we'll come in and then you have the arch of the foot which then leads into a, another um a, an ankle that's more of a it has this air i guess there's some laces in here um there's this little wrinkle here um, that little wrinkle is, you know, the separation between the toes and, you know, the, the arch of the foot, because that's where all the movement happens. You know, you stand on your tippy toes. You know, when you walk, you go from your heel and it angles up. Oh, yes. Left my... Forgive me for sampling it. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, this is a, um, it's such a great lesson. I mean, in, in knowing that you have to have the skill, like if you can draw figures, you've got to be able to draw them, um, you know, from head to toe, but then you got to be able to draw them from toe to head as well. <laughs> oh, um, God. And that's where, and that's where we are. We're going, we're going from literally his toes. We're going to come back up through the forms. Um, we'll have the little hourglass of the ankle. It's going to widen out. And then we'll get into a, um, you know, the turkey leg oval of the calf muscle. And then the, where the britches. Uh, tighten right beneath the kneecap or the and we're really actually below the uh tibia like there's like the, there's like the the little neck of the tibia <clears throat> and this guy we can you can use an oval if you wish you can use a trapezoid um the, the bottom of the knee, the side of the knee is defined by the pants and the inside of the knee, but the top of the knee really is defined by the jacket. Yeah. So this, the, the, it's, a, it's a longer waistcoat 
and it's being propped up because the knee's being propped up. So there's a thickness to the vest here. There's also a thickness to the waistcoat. And even though I'm probably overemphasizing it right now, um, I think it's worth it to see that there is a thickness to that coat. And there's the side of the coat. And now I really need, oh my gosh, I'm examining the distance between the top of the knee and the, the, you know, the top of the knee, which is the bottom of the jacket and the elbow. So there's a literal L that gives you the corner of the elbow. And this back arm is the thrust, is one of the dominant diagonals. We'll drop this lower, here we go. Um, the angle of the back of the arm is the angle of the pipe, is the angle of the inner part of the arm, and is kind of the directional angle of the whole torso. So this back arm gives us, and I'm wondering if, if, if this angle, if, I, if he was, if it were my class, and I were Franz Hals as the teacher, um, whenever you get a dot, an angle that's this prominent, you want to see that it's picked up in other places. And I can see it picked up in the Pope's arm, in the arm laying on the table, um, in the it's brim of the hat. Now. What's that? The Pope. He's a Pope now. Yeah, he's, he's really, his station <laughs> is really... From from pastry, pastry, pastry chef to a friar <laughs> to the cardinal, and now he's the pope. <laughs> I think the more I like, and the more I enjoy the drawing, the the, the higher he gets in the uh, social hierarchy. Um, but yeah, it's interesting because you know you've got if you look at the whole as a, a series of you know directions or vectors. Um, you know, this angle of the chair and his gaze, you know, that's an important diagonal, the arm, and then the angle of his, you know, the hunching angle of his forearm, you know, look at how the angle of the forearm and the, and the angle of the, um, you know, the, the spectacle arm, they just like link up and it's the same as the pipe. It's the same as the arm. Um, and I don't know if where else it's picked up, but. Okay, you know where I'm getting into trouble, and that is, um, you know, starting from the foot going up, you know, the the space between the two men is getting to be too small, and I'm not going to have enough room to fit him. Um, I almost yeah. feel I need to get the spine of this new guy in so that I, I work... Yeah, you know, I'm getting him too close to the hunched over guy, so I'm not going to have enough room to get him, his whole body in. And I'm hmm. not sure where where I made an angle that's too acute or... Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, I do. I do. And it might be... Um, if you look at the, the size of this man uh -huh. and the size of this man, they are... It, it's almost on par with the distortion of the legs of the stool. Mm. Meaning this guy is huge. And this guy is miniature. I mean, he's like a he's like a dwarf almost compared to this guy. I mean, imagine this guy were to stand up, and then this guy were to stand up. I mean, it wouldn't even be, they wouldn't even be in the same sphere. Yeah. So I think what I'm let me let me just block in very simply the the figure. So this is the yeah. this is the 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 leg, mm -hmm. and then so this is ankle to knee, and then knee to ankle. This is the extremely foreshortened part. Um, and then we'll go from uh, that pelvis down into the thigh here. So this is the you know, front of the torso, front of the torso, top of the shoulders, top of the shoulders. And then the head is, you know, the mask of the face is here. And then the brim of the hat is there. Hmm. So this is the elbow to the wrist, and then the block of the hand, You're seeing the underside of the block, the back of the hand, and then the front of the fingers holding the pipe, front of the jacket, 
and then the the arm comes down this way. So I erred on making my figure a little too small, I would say. Um, let's see, I'm going to stop the share, Adele, mm -hmm. and then I'll just have a look and see if I can pick out what it is. There's the, this is the top. What did I draw? Oh, this is, this hat feels like the uh, center of a black eyed Susan. <laughs> Um, let me put in, and once I do the the nose, nose, and then mouth, and then eyes, that'll that looks more like a person at least. Yeah, already, already, sort of ghosting him in like this has given me more confidence that I have room. Okay. And I found that I needed to I needed to tilt my foot on the bench a little bit towards the outside, towards the left. Mm -hmm. where I had it going straight up and down. It goes a little ah, bit to the left, which... Yes, I should do that too. It gives you more room as you build the knee and the, you know, the elbow and all that. Yeah, samesies. Like his ankle tilts that way. Yeah, where you are right now, where your pencil is, his mm -hmm. ankle doesn't go straight up from the bench. It goes up this way a little bit yep which look is at the what you have look at the arrow yeah yeah this arrow the whole foot angles this like that right if not even steeper yeah maybe even steeper and he has a big great big calf yep and the uh you know i did the straps uh, of the drawstrings and those angle those angle up as well so this the inside angles down and then at this corner there's a change of direction here and it goes up this way you know rather than straight across and that that further kick that you know that it kicks the whole leg it orients the leg way out here so one way another way of thinking about it you imagine you have the front of the leg and then a thin side versus the front and then a lot of the middle. You know, this one angles this way, this one angles that way. Um, and but then the, you see how and then the, the foot the foot is more like this, and then the leg is more like that. Yeah. So sorry. What'd you say? I have my headphones fell out. The knee block suddenly moves, tilts out a little bit. Yep. Yeah, so you, the knee block, you're seeing the front, and then you're seeing a lot of the inside. And that's the part that's in shadow. And then the fabric extends it width-wise. So, yeah, it's... it's... <laughs> Let's see what the, uh, oh no. I just dropped one of my tissues in my coffee. <laughs> no, <laughs> I can't drink it now. I'm not gonna drink that. <sighs> so disappointing. <laughs> oh. I, I, when I pulled, when I pulled up the, when I pulled the, the tissue out to like do my little twisty demonstration, one of them must've fallen in the coffee cup and then slowly soaked <laughs> just got, like it just got like absorbed and like got, oh no i know I, that would have been interesting to see um all right this guy's a background character let's let's see what we can do with the there's a there's a, the style of drawing where you you lay in the shadows first you know the it's called i think it's called shadow drawing so i'm just going to plot out where some of those tones are and I can come back in with uh, my line work. It is, you know, quite amazing how, yeah, how dark he is. Again helping him to get more hunched over. Whew. 
Yeah, and it could be the um, you know, this is the brim of his hat. Look how high that jacket is. Yeah, yeah. You know, it comes at, so his head is tilted really down low. Very interesting folds of the vest. I think it's the same guy. I think he just had him take a different pose. Yeah, he calls his buddies like, I need you. This could be his brother. Oh, my God, it's hilarious. Oh, Isaac. This could be Isaac. <laughs> Oh no, I can't drink my coffee. Unbelievable. So it, it's nice. We'll get a repeat of our, uh, the pinky thickness. Oh, and look at that. So you get the pinky, you get the ring finger, but not much of it because the pipe overlaps. And then the pipe overlaps the, the ring finger, the middle finger, and then it's the index finger that comes over top, you know, gripping it. Uh-huh. Love aha moments. Did you finally put it together? Yeah, it's getting it's getting there. So there, you can make a distinction between the jacket um, and you want to know whether you're drawing jacket um, or pants. And there's the jacket. It's got some, you know, wrinkles and folds, overlaps. But then underneath that, I think, is the pants. So then the britches have their unique sets of folds and tight and uh, tautness as well. So for me, it was really, I did the knee and then this is very confusing in the crotch area, but there's jacket and it's, you know, set of marks. And then there's the pants and they should not be um, you know, confused. Using these layered marks again on the inside of the jacket. It's really nice. So if you check the, the breast the you know the breast portion of the jacket is in front of the you know, just the se whole series of layerings um, folds as they go as they go down. I over I played it up too much, but then there's this folds of his longer sleeve bump 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 all down that side. Um, it goes a little bit darker in the armpit as it should and some of these deeper creases in between the folds of the jacket you know it's the a darker line on the inside of the leg you know all the way down you know there's line there's variation in the line weight but it's uh, you know the inside of the leg is drastically darker than the outside of the leg in terms of the line work, that is, as well as the values, as, long, as well as the shading. 
There's that. Get these folds again. Little happy creases. And there's the line of the bench. Oh, I forgot to do the bench. The bench can get some uh, get some tone in there too. That's a fun one. So there it looks like there's a little. It's either his pen, or it could actually be a chunk taken out of the bench. You can draw the. The grains of the wood. And the bench has um, the, the underside of the little A-frame trapezoid. And then the cast shadow. So the silhouette lines of the bench are really important because there's so much tone. And this uh, diffused blending of the graphite is a stand-in, of course, for the, for the ink washes, which is basically a watercolor. You get the line work of the pencil of the, um, from the pen, and then the blended diffusion of the, the ink. All right, let me get this guy's do a little, we'll do a quick deep dive on the uh, on the face. There it is. All right. We'll do the, the back of the brim. And that helps get the edge of the gumdrop. And I, I mean, this hexagonal form is just spectacular. So you get the, you know, up across and then down and then the implied hexagonal, which is down across and then back up. So that's where we can find this little divot in the top of the hat. And I will erase those construction lines. So the hat really does become hugely important. Um, it's the, it's the, the major mass. The brim wraps around, that looks good. And now I can, you know, instead of putting the, drawing the head and putting the hat on the head, I'm drawing the hat and putting the face, um, putting the face on the hat. Um, just because of its proportions. So we're gonna do the bridge of the nose and then the ball of the nose makes a, you have the right side, you have the front side of the nose and then the angles back up. That's the ball of the nose. And then we're gonna add a nostril onto that. So there's this little divot right there. You know, it's, you know, this is basically the corner, like the corner of the box of the ball of the nose. I, I, I am, accepting the fact that my nose is enormous and out of control, but it's, it actually makes it more fun. Um, because of the angle of the head, the, the mouth um, is coming, seemingly coming out of the nose, goes into the corner, and then the nostril flare has a wrinkle, which is a gutter that goes around the corner of the mouth. Then there's a lower lip, which is far inside, 
and then beneath the lower lip is the chin. And that's what's gonna give this steep angle of the face. <clears throat> um, so the nose entered underneath the brim and we are able to see a little bit of the, the far side eye with some eyelashes. And then the cheekbone and then the eyebrow. So again, it doesn't actually matter whether my drawing looks good um, because the, the character is so kind of ridiculous. Um, I just have to have drawn all of the things. So I'm darkening the underside of the nostril. And then from the chin, we're gonna go jawline. And then it's gonna go up to go behind that ear. Um, now, unfortunately, I have to erase that, my beautiful jawline, so that I can make the pipe uh, so I can make the pipe go in front of it. And then the shoulder emerges from the out side of the cheek and that's also important because I want my my nose to be light up against the dark ground so by me you know lifting my arm that gives the nose a uh, a dark background to kind of pop out and that goes for the um you know the silhouette of the face as well I guess maybe there's some more eyelashes. I think the eyelashes were a, could be bangs too. Um, there's some hair that's sh shooting out here. And then the edge of the sleeve goes up higher. So I made this guy even more hunched over. Um, so I, I did that earlier. So maybe I'll not make him so hunched. You don't want him to look like he, like the hunchback of Notre Dame. Still want him to be, you know, a companion, a playful companion. The, the proportions get too distorted, then you, um, you know, it becomes grotesque. And you don't want it to be grotesque. Zoom out a little bit. these darks down here. I'm kind of pushing the relationship between these two characters. Lift that arm up. That's actually even better because that arm was supposed to give me a, a, you know, a, a, a dark background for the hat to pop out. Um, I made my head and my hat too large on my first figure, which is why um, the relationship between the first guy and the second guy uh, don't line up. But if you don't see the original, they seem perfectly fine. Yeah, I did the same, I think. Well, if, uh, if it's too bad, you can just blame me. <laughs> Well, I like these guys. I like these guys. Um, oh my God, shoot. Our little, our little fella. A little peekier, or a little, a little peeking. Man.
there's this crazy gutter uh, that exists between um, the the pastry chef and the guy <laughs> who's leaning on the table. So the arm looks huge, and I think it is, but it, it's light side, shadow side. Okay, so yeah, it's good. We got a waistband. He's got a he's got a belt on. Armpit. What's up, Bales? You can go down. There's the art is the lower armpit, and then there's the upper armpit. And he's using the folds and the layering to go all the way behind the corner of the backgammon table. It's lovely. Look at how the uh, it goes elbow and then forearm folds all the way down to the cuff. And then you get an armpit on the other side. Then you get the gib line, which I talked about yesterday, the center of the of the shirt that create this like cleavage. It's like this little puffy balloon. Um, and then we'll do the face, which is just the mask. Very abbreviated. Chin, cheeks, brow line, eyes, nose, mouth, um, keystone, and then his upper eyelid and his eyes just, just peeking out from the opposite side of the uh, the Pope's sleeve. <laughs> um, we'll do a little, yeah, it looks like, I mean, obviously they didn't have newspapers, but it feels like a paper boy cap. Yeah. It's like a casquette. The underside of the rim of the casket, and then it overlaps. And the casket is nice in the sense that it has a, you know, it has a peak and then it has a shadow. So there's the, has a light side and a shadow side. So it still conforms to all of the um, the regular tonality that um, is consistent with the whole rest of the picture. So. The, uh, the casquette throws a shadow on the forehead and then the side of the face, the side of the puffy parts of the jacket, both left and right, and the whole side of the sleeve, and then the waist, and then below the belt line. And I think the, the separation between the Pope and the and the boy armpit and then there's this broken silhouette line and you can see this little gutter of a gap uh, between the man i love that little area right in there this little that little negative space there's some really nice there's little delicate moments that happen you know there's one in between the neck of the bottle and the leg and the base, you know, the, the space between the, uh, the handle. You know, this is a little island in between the wrist, the table, and the fingers. Wow, that little opening. You have this opening in between the, you know, the back of the two men. You, know, you can look for those. Look for these. Look for those little... The, the shapes that are created um, between objects and you can, you know, you know, celebrate them and, you know, treat them like they're their own, uh, own worlds almost. And if you make those correct, chances are the rest of it's going to be correct. What does correct mean? If it feels good, <laughs> that's the worst advice ever. 
um, also the best advice. <laughs> I probably should have been drawing it like this, so it wasn't wasn't blending all my. I got I got you know, graphite all over my hand. This the whole side is all blended out now. That's all right. What a scene, though. I mean, what a scene. It's great. Looks like you got a little dimple in there. I, I, oh, I played it up, but that's great. Because all of the marks that I that I drew in the face, he also drew. Um, you guys ever heard that riddle? I saw a man on London Bridge who tipped his hat and drew his cane. And in this rhyme, I told you his name. What was his name? Solomon on London Bridge. He tipped his hat and drew his cane. And in this rhyme, I told you his name. I didn't and hear the name. Andrew. Tipped his hat. Andrew. And drew. <laughs> Andrew. <laughs> Very good. Really the only one I got. <clears throat> I'm having trouble with my little fat boy. I've always wanted to be the type of person that knew a lot of riddles. I don't. Maybe someday. Maybe I'll turn into a, a backgammon riddle a riddler. <laughs> All right, let's stop the share. And we'll just, just just do a quick assessment. I think um uh oh. What's up, Stace? You wanna say hi to the team? Uh yes. However, I'm waiting for the phone to roll over to Bluetooth. Wow. So I know the minute that you say, hey, say hello to the team, it will take two seconds to roll over. So let's wait two seconds. Okay. Well, I, you're on. One, you're... One thousand, two, two thousand. It hasn't rolled. So hello, everybody. Hey. <laughs> Hold on. I have what? to. <laughs> Like, you couldn't you couldn't hear them. I could hear them, but so no one said hello. No, Grace and yeah, we all said hello. It was just they okay. said it, but you couldn't hear it because it was okay. I had headphones in, but I don't anymore. Ask them um, to please tell me how is their art coming along. Yeah, you can talk. How what? Them. Hey, hey, hey! hey. How's art coming along? And what are you doing? What are you making? Um, well, we're work completing the other figures, the two other dudes from yesterday. Oh, okay. Hey, that's super. So the hands have been done, huh? Yeah. Why isn't my phone rolling over? Uh, hold on one second, please. All right, we can handle it. Oh, actually, Stacy, let me call you back. Well, I don't know. So can I can I call you right? Can I call you right back? Think that they ridiculous. Did you guys think the hands were ridiculous? Which hands? The ones from uh, yesterday. 
You mean the hands of the Pope and? <laughs> yes. The, yeah, pa the, yeah. the papal hands. <laughs> They're pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. All right, guys. Oh, boy. Sometimes I feel my drawings get overwrought, you know, just, you know. Um, what do you mean? Just I go over them and over them too much and they get muddy. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, and that's, and that's what, I mean, I don't, that's just comes from, that just comes from, uh, you know, just not knowing, you know, it's, that's what, that's what the process, like his process of sketching it in pencil, solving the problem, and then hitting it with pen when it's like 100%, you know, that's, that's kind of the difference. And it's the, it's the, it's a failure of graphite. Yeah. And the fact that graphite is so, um, you can erase it so easily and, you know, you can change it and you can blend it. It's like, it's flexibility is also its um, downfall because um, you know you can work it and rework it and rework it and rework it. Um, anyway, if you did hit it with pencil and then made it perfect, you know this idea of perfect practice makes perfect. Um, get the pencil drawing perfect and then hit it with the pen, um, and then all those pencil lines would be erased. So you'd refine it. It's I'm just looking at how he how these guys worked and you know it really is kind of a i'll i'll, I'll go back um because these are not these are the brothers let me go back to the screen share because i'll show you i'll show you what i mean with this with this you know the the you're working and refining one piece of art where the subject was refined over like so many different takes. Oh. So watch, watch, watch this. Um, and just not for the composition, but for the, um, you see you see this one? Mm -hmm. This one that yeah. we looked at yesterday? Yeah. There's, pen, there's pencil lines and then there's very general uh, ink lines. So this is essentially like a gestural uh, expression. Then, here it goes to um you know there's pencil lines and then there's a really refined you know detailed pen line okay and then this is isaac but it's the point is the same it's like now this is now it has an entire scene so everything all the values are laid in you know i think it would be actually really fun to take this drawing here and make a really dramatic lighting arrangement. right you could put like a um you put like a lamp right up up here and then make it a you know a, a nighttime tavern scene you know there's this light source here so everything else is um mm -hmm. and then and then this gets taken to um a canvas so then it gets redrawn new set of values and then full-blown color um so this would be the first attempt this would be the second this would be the third and then you bring it into the oil. So, and then the oil is even more forgiving, you know, and then you can, you can layer it. So by the, you know, by the fifth time you actually tackle something, it's going to be right. Wow. I'm not sure that I would have the patience to redraw something three or four times. Well, yeah. You I mean, you, I mean, if somebody's going to pay you $20,000, you would. Yeah, that's true. You know, and that's the, I mean, that's the motivation. Yeah. This is this is a business. I mean, it is romantic, and, but it's also work. And you know, the, seeing it in that, a lot of the decisions and a lot of the strategies on why things were created the way that they were were basically basic efficiency and productivity maximizers. You know, you make the drawing so you don't screw up the painting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah.
Well, yeah, like having never dab, having never gotten into painting, you know, I don't I don't have a full appreciation of that process. Yeah, and the and you know, learning drawing is a good skill, but you'll appreciate drawing on such a deeper level when you make a painting because it's all you know kind of preparatory. But you also have the right, you, like the the painting is maybe 20%. I mean, I, I'd say 80% of the ideas and the and the satisfaction and the knowledge, um, you know, of understanding of, you know, art, 80% of it is in this drawing of the value and the light and the figures and um, coloring it is, I would say 20%, which is not that much, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a, it is a, it is a very, um satisfying and you know a, a, you know the cult you know using colors um you know it's like you learn how to use lines and then you learn how to use shapes and then you learn how to use forms and then you learn how to light forms um, and then you know how to turn forms into trees and grass and hair and fingers you know those are all really you know those are all just like deepening your understanding of reality and then to do all of those plus color um you know color is just another aspect of you know deepening the understanding of you know reality and then sharing it that's the scary part what's that yep. color or sharing yep. no color yeah color. i mean the thing is everything is scary um until you know until you do it so i had a um yeah, there's, do you guys have uh, like iPads? Yeah. So there's, um, there's a, I think there's a program, it's called like Create or Co-Create, something like that. Um, I think, I need to do it myself actually, but I think painting and using the iPad to experiment with color, um, I, I think that it's the way to go because you can make, it's like, uh, you, know, you know, like the idea of like 10,000 hours, you know, to call it, don't call it 10,000 hours, maybe just call it 10,000 decisions. So you have to, you have to see how, you know, a, a, a neutral background mixes with, you know, purple, you know, what purple looks like on gray, what purple looks like on green, what purple looks like on blue, what purple looks like on light purple, you know, like you have to like think through so many things through um you know trying to paint stuff and when you when you have to mix colors with oil you get to mix maybe 20 or 30 decisions in one session whereas if you had co-create you could do 20 or 30 decisions in two minutes or one minute and so it's like the that 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 soccer the you know all the great soccer players come out of brazil and they're like how is that possible are they like ethnically like superior um to other countries why they're the best and it's like no they they as children they play a form of soccer it's indoor and it's about half the size of a regular soccer field and they get to kick the ball take six times more shots make six times more passes um play you know they get six times more opportunities to practice soccer moves because of the size of the of the the field and so they're they get they're they're six times better of a player because they've got six times more experience and you know when you have these the technology with colors um you can accelerate um the experiencing color interaction by 10 or 100 fold um and i don't I, I've, I've seen it happen and I do it a little bit. Um, I just have painted for so long that I can do it with oil paints, but I, I did it. I practiced it for 15 years, you know, where I feel like if I had the computer, I would have been able to learn color within a year. What took me 15 years to learn. Wow. I re and I saw it happen with my friend, Peter, um, and I mean, just a basic painting program on the iPad. Um, you just see something, you try to cut and you, you draw, you know how to draw everything. I mean, we can, we can draw anything. 
and then you just get to choose colors and you fill in shapes and you paint on top and it's it, there's no mess there's no cleanup um does it look like a digital reproduction yes uh you know is it is it a digital art piece yes but in the end you know you're still playing for fifa you know what i mean like you get you will still make oil paintings in the end it's just you can practice on a, on a, on a, in a, and get experience in a, in a safer place. So I need to actually, um, I need to get good at it myself because that's where everybody's going to, that's, I mean, that's how I'm, you're going to, we're going to have to teach. Like, why not be great at, at 21 rather than wait till 41, you know, <laughs> have the same experience, same hours of same amount of artistic decisions. It's more of a, a volume of choices, choosing colors, and, and yeah. Well, if you know what, if you have the name of that app, maybe it's worth looking at. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll find out exactly what it is. I need to get a new iPad anyway. I got the I got a new program um, the, to help with murals, and it, it actually requires two devices in order to you know, tr translate small drawings up to big on the big surfaces. Um, and my iPad doesn't even have it's not it, it can't. It can't support it because it's so old. So I'm, I'm going to be getting a new iPad. And I'll, I think that I'm ready for that phase of uh, teaching. Um, okay, I have a private lesson at 1230. So I have to go. Can I, right. can I see what you can I see what you guys did? real quick? Yeah, let's see. You want to show it, Adele? Here, we're oh, ready. Sure. Let me stand up. Yeah, ah. that's it. Oh, cool. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, your that back figure turned out to be um, turned out great. Yeah, just great. I kept um, I kept him ghost like, you know. Yeah, it looks awesome. And the rectangle nice. works really nicely, too. It'd be neat to, th to throw in, to invent the background. You could actually yeah. put it through, you know, you know print it out, maybe. Um, you know, photograph it and print it, and then would it, print it on some nice paper. If you cut that paper down to 8.5 by 11, uh -huh. print it out on that, and then, you know, then you could add the background, or you could just add it right on that one. Who cares? The table feels so atmospheric. You, you re I really feel the light on your table better than um, even on his. You know, it feels wow. very, you know, it's very, very realistic. If that's- yeah. If you look at it closely though, it's really muddy and I'm trying, you know, muddy and as I said, over, overwrought, you know, like lines over, drawn yeah. over and over, over again. Overworked, yeah, overworked. Yeah, yeah. But it, it's, it, it looks fantastic. And it, even like the, the separations between the planks on the table, it's real nice. Well, um, all right, Grace, I want to pin you. Ooh. Yeah, it's great. I love your, I, your, uh, your pastry chef is great. <laughs> the dimples in the hat are awesome. Cool. Um, I had trouble with the little boy, honestly. I had to redo him several times to get him fat enough. Oh, he's so cute, though. Oh. <laughs> I found it easy to make him fat because um, he needed to fill that space. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I there's kept fattening a, him up. <laughs> there's a lot of person. <clears throat> I feel a lot of personalities coming through um, more in that one <laughs> than uh, than these. I think it might be a. I think it might be a, a time frame too. I think we can. It's easier to relate. I think to the, the personalities of the people that are made now. It's, it's I don't think it's, I don't think we can control it necessarily, but there would be a certain time of, you know how they talk about language barrier? I think there, there would be, if you were to actually travel through time, I think there would be a, a, a period of adjustment, like a consciousness adjustment. I think the, the nature of humans would be, <clears throat> very different it would be it would be a similar thing to cultural um you know like a like a, a culture barrier you know you have to assimilate into a culture that's unfamiliar and it feels strange i think if you were actually able to time travel 
there would be a similar effect and it might be a, a really i actually really enjoy you know going to new places and um experiencing new cultures like that's i like adjusting um and just experiencing it and i think you know the that aspect of time i think would be really a fun a fun adventure yeah. another dimension to the a, and to a travel um yeah, and I think the fa the way the faces read and the way we're able to understand them um, versus understanding people today. Um, it is a form of time travel, I suppose. I don't know what I'm talking about. I did not I did not eat any gummies with my with my coffee. <laughs> um, okay, I gotta I got get through this class. Well, thank um, you. This was yeah, really no, great. Thank you. I'm, that was, that was great. It was very necessary. So I'll see you guys later. Okay. Bye. Bye.